Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell and then come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Wednesday, November the 1st. I had to think. <laughs> that happens, I guess, when you travel. But I'm in New Hampshire. I'm in my hotel room. I had a wonderful time of prayer this morning. And our devotions, of course, are coming from Joyce Meyer's book called Trusting God Day by Day. And our devotion today is entitled Open the Door to Christ. I hope the lighting's okay. I, get, you know, I guess you can see me. But, um, all right. Our scripture comes from the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 20. And it reads, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears and listens and heeds my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will eat with him and he will eat with me. Okay, I love that particular, it's one of my favorites, Revelation 3.20. All right, now let's hear how Joyce breaks this down. Jesus is knocking at the door of many hearts right now, but we must remember that the doorknob is on our side. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will not force his way into our lives. We must welcome him. Open the door of your heart to him by stretching your faith a little. Be like Peter, the one person in the group who got out of the boat and walked on the water. Peter probably had butterflies in his stomach when he got out of the boat, but as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he did all right. Look at Matthew chapter 14, verses 23 through 30. For that story. God has a great, big, wonderful life planned for you and me, but if we are stiff-necked, as God calls it, as he called the Israelites uh, in Exodus 33, 3, or hard-headed, as we say today, <laughs> then we will miss what God has for us. We'll miss it. I mean, look at the Israelites. They wandered around for 40 years in the desert because they were so stiff-necked and the journey literally should have only taken about 11 days, if I'm remembering. I cannot quote exactly where I got that. I remember hearing a sermon about that and being amazed that it was such a short journey, but for 40 years they were wandering because they were stiff-necked. Okay. Stubbornness sets us in our ways. And we never stop to ask ourselves if our ways are really God's ways or not. His ways are not our ways. And if we are determined to continue doing things the way we have figured them out in our head is the best way, uh, we're probably going to miss God because there's that pesky little scripture in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. He may have given you a brilliant analytical mind that's orderly, that can think of the best way to do it, and that's a special gift from the Lord. But you better make sure that's under the blood. You better make sure that this is what the Lord wants you to do. I mean, I've met some people that are absolute genius when it comes to solving problems, and I know that's a gift from the Lord. But make sure, make sure you're in alignment with God's plan for your life. Okay. In the Old Testament book of Haggai, I hope I'm saying that right. The people were living in lack and experiencing many problems. So God told them to consider their ways. Look at Haggai chapter 1 verse 5. Many times when people are not fulfilled in life, they look for the reason in everything and everyone except themselves. They want to blame it. They want it, the Teflon so nothing sticks to them. They want it all to be pushed off on someone else, which is just flat out immaturity. I'm just going to say that right there. It's immaturity to do that. Okay. If you are not satisfied with your life, do as God told the people of Judah. Consider your ways. Like me, you may find that you need to make some changes. I was stubborn, opinionated, hard-headed, proud, and everything else that kept me from making progress. But thank God he has changed me. I pray that he continues to change me until I am just like him, and that will be a lifelong journey. 
Philippians 1 6 he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it answer that knock at your heart's door and allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life in all of his fullness now there's one thing being a children's minister when I have ministered to children about salvation and made the offer to them they're little they understand they can hear and it's just because they're young does not mean that they don't understand the concept of salvation so I would tell them you know the Bible tells us that Jesus stands at the door of our heart and he knocks what does that mean that means we feel we feel a desire to um, believe what Jesus says and if I said if you have a friend coming over and you know they're coming over you know that's them outside and you hear them knocking do you leave them standing outside or what do you do I said you open the door and say hello come on in I said that's what Jesus wants you to do today he wants you to say hello come on in <laughs> and allow him to come in and it is it is precious because I think that kind of gives them an idea of what that means you know they understand when they're thinking or feeling things you know when you explain to them that that feeling you're having is the Lord asking you to invite him into your heart and that's all you really have to do allow him in allow the Holy Spirit to come in and transform you into what he wants you to be and it's not it's not all that different except that you're allowing him to take the lead your desires is no longer to fulfill your flesh or your wants and your desire is to do things God's way that's Lord what does your word say what is the right thing to do when you do that it your life takes on a whole new meaning and it is the it is the most peaceful place to be because the pressure's off He's the one leading, and he's the one who is safe to trust. Not your flesh, not your emotions, not this world. This world is corrupted. I'm sorry. Can't be trusted. <laughs> All right. Our trust in him today is God will not force his way into your life. True that. He won't. You must open the door for him. Step out in faith and put your trust in him so that he can do great things through you and for you let's pray father in the name of Jesus I just thank you for this word I thank you father that it's a simple invitation and all we have to do is open the door and say come on in help us to do that father for those who are resisting it for those who are maybe fearful of it father only your Holy Spirit can communicate the peace their soul needs Help us to better understand that. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, Father God, and hearts that are willing to obey. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance. Thank you for your faithfulness. I give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. Um, I will be going home tomorrow afternoon. And so you'll have one more devotion from my hotel room tomorrow. <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful midweek Wednesday. God bless you and bye until next time.